क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा Hello friends in the previous topic we have discussed about the introduction of group 15 elements and now in this topic we are going to talk about the trends in the physical properties of group 15 elements so what are those trends let me talk about that in this topic So friends, now in this topic we are going to talk about the trends in the physical properties of group 15 elements. So those points that we are going to talk about is atomic radius, ionization enthalpy, electronegativity, metallic and non-metallic character. Okay, but the next one that is physical appearance and density, and that is melting point and boiling point. So this all points that is what we are going to cover in this topic. So starting with the first one that is atomic radius. So friends, if we compare the group 15 elements with group 14 elements, so for that let me give you a small introduction here so friends as we know that is as we move across a period then obviously the atomic number goes on decreasing so that's the reason that this atomic size of boron it will be comparatively larger compared to that of this carbon and compared to that of this nitrogen so this relates that this nitrogen will have an atomic size which is lesser than that of the carbon so that's the reason that for corresponding elements that is for suppose if i'm talking about phosphorus obviously it will have a lesser atomic radius compared to that of silicon and arsenic will have lesser atomic radius compared to that of that is germanium so this is what i'm going to talk about and we are going to compare it with group 14 elements as well as group 15 elements so now let us understand this comparison also and also we are going to talk about the trends that are being belonging to the group 15 elements so starting with the atomic radius we have so we have understood that is if we move along the group or down the group that is from nitrogen to basement so it has been found that is the atomic size it will go on increasing because of the various factors for example because of the nuclear charge because of the increase in the valence shell because of increase of the principal shell so that is the reason that the atomic size goes on increasing so it has been found that is the nitrogen will have a smaller size compared to that of the every element that are being belonging to the group 15 and that's the reason that uh, the nitrogen and the phosphorus they have basically a larger difference if we compare in the form of a that is covalent radius but if we compare about arsenic and bismuth the difference between the covalent radius is not that much very large and that's the reason that the atomic radius actually it goes on increasing down the group so that was related to the atomic radius and now let me talk about the ionization enthalpy we understand that is ionization enthalpy is nothing but the energy required to remove the outermost or to remove the loosely bonded electrons for an atom. So in this case, basically, if you talk about nitrogen and if you talk about bismuth, so as we move down the group, we'll understand that is because nitrogen is a very smaller element compared to that of the other elements, and bismuth is obviously it is having a more atomic radius. So therefore, to remove the electrons or to remove the loosely bonded electron of nitrogen, it requires a higher energy, and that's the reason that the ionization enthalpy of nitrogen is more compared to that of bismuth because bismuth obviously it is having a larger size and that's the reason that uh, the last electron or the electron which is very much loosely bonded with that of the nucleus of the bismuth obviously it is very much less and that's the reason to remove that electron is very much easier and that requires very less energy so this is nothing but it was related to the ionization enthalpy of uh, that is uh, the group 15 elements and talking about the ionization enthalpy we understand that is the ionization enthalpy the first ionization enthalpy the second as well as the third ionization enthalpy it increases as if we remove the electron from the outermost shell but if we compare it for the nitrogen to remove all the three electrons from its p orbital it is very much difficult and that is the reason that the nitrogen is the one which will have highest ionization enthalpy so that was related to the ionization enthalpy and now let me talk about electronegativity so Talking about the electronegativity, obviously there are various factors that could increase the electronegativity of a particular element. For example, if we talk about nitrogen, so nitrogen is the smallest element in the group 15 element and uh, talking about the bismuth, obviously it will have a larger size compared to that of the other one. But if we talk about the other factors like uh, atomic size or suppose if we talk about that is shielding effect. It has been found that is the shielding effect of the bismuth is very much larger compared to that of the nitrogen and that's the reason that electron accepting capacity for nitrogen is more that makes the nitrogen to be more electronegative by talking about the bismuth so in this case basically the bismuth is the one that will have a shielding effect and that's the reason that uh, it will not have an electron affinity towards the outer electron so talking about 
bismuth. So bismuth has basically a shilling effect and that's the reason the electronegativity of bismuth is less. So if we compare it from nitrogen to bismuth, it has been found that is the electronegativity, it decreases down the group. So that was related to the electronegativity and now let me talk about the metallic and non-metallic character. So talking about the metallic character of the group 15 elements. So it has been found that is the metallic character of group 15 elements are comparatively less compared to that of the group 14 elements. The reason is because of the atomic size as well as because of the nuclear charge and other factors like shielding effect. So if we talk about the nitrogen, it has been found that is the nitrogen is a non-metal and that's the reason it has no metal character. So that's the reason it is considered to be non-metal. But if we compare it with bismuth, so bismuth is the element that has been present at the last of the group 15 element and obviously it will have a larger atomic size and obviously we understand that is it will have a shilling effect. So that's the reason to lose electron for the bismuth is very much easy and that's the reason bismuth has a metallic character. While talking about the nitrogen obviously it is a form of a gaseous state so that's the reason it is the one which is having a non-metallic character. But if we talk about the other elements also like suppose arsenic and bismuth. So suppose if we compare it with other elements for example if I'm talking about phosphorus so even phosphorus is basically a non-metal so that's the reason that the nitrogen and phosphorus they both are basically non-metallic in nature and talking about the other elements that is arsenic and antimony so they are the one they are basically metalloids and uh, that's the reason they have a property of metals also or they have a property of non-metal also and as I've discussed earlier that is the bismuth is the one which is like a pure metal and that has a metallic character so that was related to the metallic and non-metallic character and now let me talk about the next one that is physical appearance and density so talking about the physical appearance of the group 15 elements so starting with the first one that is nitrogen so nitrogen is basically a diatomic molecule and that's the reason it is for of a gas while the rest of the elements that is if i talk about phosphorus and the other elements they are in the form of a solid state and talking about that is phosphorus from phosphorus to that is antimony they are also present in a tetratomic state and that's the reason that uh, the nitrogen is comparatively different from that of the other elements because all the other elements they are present in a tetratomic state for example p4 that is sn4 so therefore they are present in a tetratomic state but talking about bismuth so bismuth is a metallic character so talking about bismuth so bismuth is present in a monoatomic state i talk about the bonds between the two atoms for example if i talk about the bond between the nitrogen and the nitrogen it is found to be three so that's the reason that is the nitrogen forms three bond with the other atom so that's the reason that is the nitrogen forms three bond with nitrogen and if we compare it with the other one for example if we compare it for phosphorus and if we compare it for arsenic so they form a single bond between an arsenic and other arsenic so that is the difference between these two and now let me talk about the next one that is melting point and boiling point so talking about the melting point and boiling point so it has been found that is the melting point of the group 15 element it increases from nitrogen to arsenic and talking about the rest of the thing from arsenic it decreases to bismuth so that was related to the melting point and now let me talk about the boiling point so the boiling point actually it increases that is from nitrogen to bismuth because bismuth is obviously it is a metallic character so obviously it will have a larger so obviously it will have a higher boiling point so that was related to the melting point and boiling point but now let me elaborate a another property that is conductivity so nitrogen is basically a non-metal and that's the reason the conductivity is, is very much less or we could also call it as non-conductor but talking about bismuth so bismuth has a metallic character and that's the reason that it is very much good conductor of heat as well as electricity even talking about the antimony even antimony is good conductor of heat and electricity so that was related to the properties and the physical traits of group 15 elements and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much